Order in the court. Order in the court. <laughs> so today's um, reading brings me to the end of 1 Corinthians, chapters um, 14, 15, and 16. And I say order in the court because chapter 14, he's talking about order in the church. Um, but first, I need to bring. We need to go back to Acts nineteen and twenty. So, as you know, I'm reading through the Bible in a year chronologically through this app, and um, the reading today was actually um, a combination of of Acts, First uh, Corinthians, and Romans one. Um, and so, I did not read Romans one. I read. Those three chapters in First Corinthians, which is the end of of that of that letter, and then Acts twenty uh, and twenty one, um, and the I'm gonna I'm gonna do Acts a disservice in my update today because I'm not going to talk about all the things that Paul and and um, the other disciples did and all the places that they went, um, but I will just mention that. Um, that it be that 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 section begins by talking about Paul going to Corinth, which is why they probably put it in that um, reading for today. So Paul went to Corinth and um, was the first person there to share the gospel with them. Um, there was uh, uh, initially he was um, talking about the resurrection. Twelve guys came to the Lord. Um, he um, he uh, they were um, they received. Um, the Holy Spirit and gifts of prophecy and tongues, and Paul stayed with that um, that church, that new church, for about two years, building them up. And now, First um, Corinthians was the letter that he sent to them, the first letter, obviously, because there's Second Corinthians as well. Um, but the first letter that Paul sent to them after having been away from them for quite a while, and he's trying to kind of straighten the house a little bit. And where we find ourselves in 1 Corinthians um, 14, 15, and 16, the end of that letter, um, Paul is trying to straighten the house a little bit more. So uh, in in Acts, we see that kind of the, the two first things, the spiritual gifts that were mentioned, were that they received tongues and uh, prophecy. And apparently that got a little out of control and Paul needed to get a little order in the church. And so in Acts, I'm sorry, in uh, 1 Corinthians, um, he begins by telling them about the purpose of tongues and the purpose of prophecy. And it's pretty interesting. So read it for yourself because, um, you know, uh, there, there, might, there are disagreements in the purpose and what those are. But clearly in the first church, the purpose of tongues was so that people who did not speak a language could share the gospel in that foreign language to people um, who spoke that language. So example, um, I don't speak um, Russian. And if uh, I went to Russia, if I, if I had the gift of tongues, I would automatically um, by the Spirit, be able to speak Russian so I could share the gospel with Russian speakers who don't understand English. That was the purpose of the tongues. And so um, the second one is prophecy. And the pur purpose of prophecy was to basically share the truth of the scripture with people. And so what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14 is that those are the purposes of those two things. So um, the purpose of tongues was for evangelism. The purpose of prophecy was for edifying the church. And both must be done in an orderly way. In fact, he says, if you speak tongues in the church, for example, um, you should you don't need to, you shouldn't. That was his whole case there, right? Because it's not for the church, but for those that are unsaved. But if you do, you need a translator. So tongues requires translation because you, you know, because you don't know what they're saying if they don't, right? And it's useless. Um, secondly, with prophecy, he says prophecy requires judgment. So he says if somebody's going to be a prophet, let two or three uh, speak prophecy, meaning um, interpret the scriptures, but 
they also need to judge what they're saying to make sure that what they're saying is true and does comport with scriptures. In other words, they need to be biblically accurate. So prophecy and tongues, two different gifts, two different purposes, two different requirements of them. After that, in uh, 15 and 16 of 1 Corinthians, Paul, um, well, in 15, Paul goes in to talk about the resurrection. And um, he's talking to these people and saying, listen, Jesus rose from the dead. If he didn't, then our faith is in vain. Also, if he didn't, then we don't raise from the dead. And we might as well just live it up here on earth because there's nothing after this. And so he, and that's a really bad um, summary of it, but that's essentially what he says um, in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. Um, and so he's just talking again about the importance of the resurrection. We saw this early on, remember, that when they were sharing the gospel with people, they would start historically with the resurrection of Jesus. And so he's saying this is still an, the, the important thing. In fact, he says that is the first thing that you need to understand, that Jesus, um, that all of this was according to the scriptures, right? That he died and rose again um, according to the scriptures. And so the resurrection is key and essential to the gospel, to the church, and to um, a life that pleases the Lord. And then finally in chapter 16, it's pretty neat because it's really just a wrap up of him just kind of sharing, um, you know, greetings with different people and, and different things. And um, and so I won't get into all of that, but it's kind of neat just to see that Paul spent years with this, with these people, got to know them, got to love them, miss them, and sending this letter just trying to encourage them as well. And so um, it brings, um, when when Paul ends his letters this way with personal greetings to people and all of that, it really just brings the humanity of it all in, that the Christian life in the church is not a um, intellectual proposition, um, although it is, uh, but it is a relational, um, um, it's a relational thing, right? So, um, it's neat to see that when he, he typically opens and ends his letters with personal comments like that. So anyways, that's the wrap up for today. And um, and I hope you dig in to the scriptures to learn them for yourself.